Hi, welcome back to the shop. Today, a customer has brought me a Lucasi Q that had a rubber sport grip on it, and he wants to put leather on. Unfortunately, when we take the rubber off of these cues, they're really, really deep, so I have to build it up, and that's what we're gonna do today. Hope you enjoy. Okay, we're gonna jump right in. So this cue has been mostly prepped. I've removed the rubber, which was a pretty big process. It took me about an hour or so to do that. Not fun. So basically, I'm just gonna finish tidying up the edges of the grooves because we wanna build this whole area up with Bondo because there's not a whole lot of options to do that. I thought I did a pretty good job already, but I didn't. And that always shows up in the end. But that's good enough now. So this wrap is the one that's gonna be going on. It's a really nice boar skin, but it is way smaller than the wrap channel. So I have to build that up. So that's the next step. So quick and dirty, we're gonna mix up some Bondo and put it on. That's what I'm gonna do. Just like body work that I don't do. So if any body men or women are watching this and I mix the Bondo incorrectly, I'm sorry. It's just the way it's gonna be. I'm learning too. So I don't even know how much of this I'm gonna use. So I'm just gonna pour this out onto my mixing table like a real champ. This is boring. And this is, the only reason I'm videoing this is this is the last of this job that I'm ever going to do. I told myself a long time ago, I would not do any rubber wrap replacements. And I got myself sucked into doing this one. I didn't learn my lesson the last times, but this time I promise you, this is the last one. I am not doing another sport grip replacement. And I do charge a premium to do this because it's literally four times the work. And I think, I think that color looks good. I don't know. I'm not a body man. Today I'll play one on TV. Super messy. Yeah, okay. This is fun. Dispose of my garbage later. Okay. This is probably not the way most people would do this, but I'm not most people. So I'm just gonna layer this on. I just want to build this whole handle area up, make it thicker. And I might have to do this a couple times and we'll cut so you don't have to watch this whole process. This is just to give you an idea of what happens. You can see why I don't want to do this again. Once this bondo hardens, I'm gonna sand it down smooth and make it, it's gonna be hidden but with the leather. So it doesn't have to look good or bad. I just want it flat because you will feel, the customer will feel any differences in height. And we don't want that to be a thing. We want it to be smooth, steady. job. I 
can already tell I'm gonna have to mix up another batch after this hardens up. Because I didn't do make enough. Which is fine. I learn as I go too. I've only done this job maybe four or five times. And every time I tell myself it was the last time, this time I mean it. It's almost like I'm in an abusive relationship. Where I keep saying I'm gonna stop and I just can't. No way do I condone being in a, an abusive relationship. Leave if you don't feel safe. I think we'll cut here, let this dry, and I'll probably do another coat and come back and we can go from there. Welcome back. It's been about uh, 15 minutes since I applied the first coat of Bondo onto this wrap channel. I've since applied a second coat and it's about set up enough that I can give it a little sanding. It looks really, really rough and that's fine. I'm gonna sand it down smooth it's hidden by the leather once it's applied. So I'm gonna turn the dust collector on because I'm gonna try sanding it. I'm gonna sand it with 220 grit sandpaper, which I think is gonna be enough. I've got a remote control for my dust collection. I don't know if we heard that turn on, but I've got dust, dust here. I'm gonna sand it and hopefully it does a pretty good job of taking the debris out. Maybe not. It doesn't matter. There we go. I'm just adding pressure with my fingers very near the wrap channel. I don't want to touch the finish. I'll do the same on the back side. a lot better actually I think uh, I'm gonna continue on with this for a little bit and uh, we don't have to watch this it's pretty boring so we'll probably cut I'll sand this down smooth put another thinner coat of Bondo on get it really smooth and it will probably be ready for application of the leather so we've done four coats I think maybe five could be six I think it's four uh, coats of Bondo and I think I'm very very close to being at the right thickness if we can see here it's pretty noticeable. The Bondo has almost completely filled the wrap channel. So I'm going to take a razor blade and just cut it down to where I think it's gotta be. And I'll double check after. I'm gonna do the same thing on the forearm side of the wrap channel. And then just sand it again so it's smooth. It looks pretty good now. I mean, this is probably acceptable to put the leather wrap on, but I'm gonna double check and make sure. We don't wanna do this a whole bunch of times. And these little Kazi cues, unfortunately it's a budget cue. Um, so the clear coat isn't very good. Actually nothing's very good about these, unfortunately. Um, but they're wallet friendly cues. So a lot of people, there's a lot of them in the marketplace. But if you can see there's clear coat issues over here, this is chipped out. I'm not, I'm not gonna address those because um, they were there to start with and it's bad so we're stuck with them certainly not going to put the time and effort and money into trying to refinish this Lucasi. 
this is about the extent of the hard work that I ever want to do on any cue. Like I said, I, I absolutely love rubber grip cues. They're awesome. Everybody, please run out and buy one. And then when the wrap needs replaced, throw it away. Or find somebody else. There's a guy, and Ryan, I hope you're watching this. Rat Cues, Ryan Thewin. You can find him on Facebook, on Instagram. Rat Cues, search him. He is the absolute king at doing wraps, and he loves doing Lucasi and Predator sport wraps. That's staying in the video, Ryan, so I really hope you see this, and I hope you get a ton of love. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> I'm just happy. I'm just going to stand here and just smile, thinking about your messages blowing up. <laughs> Love it. That just came to me, Ryan. Oh, shoot. I hope this video gets a million views. Rat cues. Uh. <laughs> I'll warn you before I post, Ry. So you can expect an influx of people hitting you up to do rubber grips. <laughs> You'll probably swear at me now, forever. Nobody likes doing these drops. I don't know why I said yes. <sighs> the soft touch sometimes. But I promise you I won't do this job again. This video is gonna be hopefully for whoever in my location wants to do these jobs going forward you can learn from my from my headaches as always everybody you know follow me on my other social media pages I've got a facebook q joe's customs instagram q joe's underscore customs i do a lot of you know quick quick videos. Sometimes I put pictures up of jobs I've just done or when I get a shipment of stuff in. It's always interesting. So you can follow me on there. It's really easy to get a hold of me on those platforms. I'm quite responsive to messages. I'm trying to do better. If you watch my last video, every day I try to do a little bit better. And I have been responding to all the YouTube inquiries, but still Facebook, Insta is faster. So I get those immediately. My phone is never far from my hands, so I can get to those. So I'm going to check now with this, and see how close we are. Wow, I don't, I don't know if I'm good or lucky, but this is super, I'm pleased. I'm so pleased right now. You guys can't tell, but I am absolutely ecstatically happy. So what I'm gonna do is sand this a little bit. I'm gonna turn the lathe on and I'm gonna sand this at 2000 RPM. It's gonna be quick just gonna smooth this out a little bit and we'll go from there. I'm gonna turn my dust collection on too. So I'm gonna sand this, just make it smooth. So 
I'm doing now is just making sure that the edge, the top and the bottom of the wrap channel are square because that's where the leather is going to seat. And I mean, that's where people look. But you can look at this clear coat is just not awesome. That's, that's a production cue thing. Super boring. Maybe we'll edit some of this stuff out. You know, here after media is in the studio. <laughs> studio, what a word. My miniature shop. And he's gonna take care of all this stuff. Absolutely follow here after media. Look at the link somewhere here. The best guy I know to do everything video related. He's got an awful lot of really good pool content on his channel. Definitely check that out. Delving into the thinking side of the game. Really, really interesting stuff. Definitely check it out. If you're watching me, that means you're into pool. So it's a natural fit, guys. And the one girl that watches me on on YouTube. I was not surprised in the least when I checked out my followers that it's 99% male. Um, any tips on how to change that? I'm, I'm listening. My ears are open. I definitely want to know. Definitely girls play pool. Women. So you think they'd want to know how their stuff is maintained. Wow, this edge is looking really, really good. So I'm going to check again with the actual piece of leather. The leather varies, obviously. All these, you know, we buy leather. Oh, that's perfect. One guy can't be this lucky, right? Good looking, charming. And can lay a coat of Bondo? What is up? Okay, he's gonna be happy. So quick, a quick another sanding, just to make it smooth. And then I'm gonna make it ugly with some very aggressive 80 grit sandpaper. And I'm just gonna put a couple score marks in this really, really roughly. So the glue I use to apply the leather wrap sticks. I'm gonna spin this a little bit slower too. Just like that. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but it's definitely got some marks in it now. I'm going to turn my dust collection off because I'm done, hopefully, making any sort of dust. And that, my impromptu workstation that's on top of my lathe just made an awful noise that Andreas is not going to be happy about, but that's okay. He'll deal. Okay. I'm gonna break here really quickly, only so I can go wash my hands because I'm going to start doing the leather stuff now and I don't want dust on it. So we'll back in a moment. Okay, so now I've cleaned up the wrap channel, smoothed out the Bondo. I did a little prep work while the camera was off because this is sort of time consuming and tedious. What I've done is taken my leather blank, good side up facing us, taped it down to my cutting surface measured center and marked it. It's really important to have our center. On the cue, I've also marked a center line. I've turned it around 180 degrees and used a piece of one inch masking tape 
to clear off an area that's not going to be glued. This will become very clear in a moment why I've done this. So the next step is to cut my leather blank to the correct length. So what I have done, I manufactured this tool. It's really, really slick. It expands to the, cent to the size of my wrap channel, it has tapers on both ends. So I can measure and cut my leather blank in one step. I've manufactured these, I made these, I sold them, I'm sold out, I'm no longer making more. Sorry. So I measure my length, go to my center marks. There's holes in the top of this guy. I'll turn it to the camera so we can see it. I'm just gonna line those up, put some tension on the spacer, screw it down. This is how long my raft channel is. Now, that center line I mark, I'm gonna center it on my holes. Pretty straightforward. Take a brand new razor blade, really important, sharp. These safety razors are the ones I wanna use because they're super thin and the taper that's on them is very minor. I wanna cut this as smooth, straight, and flat as possible to meet the flat edges of this wrap channel. I want it to be tight. So one smooth cut all the way around. We're done with this tool now. It's been fun, useful. We're done. One step. These pieces are useless. They're garbage. Here's my piece. This is what we've been looking for. So now if I line this up, perfect, perfect. Now I'm going to flip this around and we see this one inch area that doesn't have, that has tape on it. I'm going to mark it on both sides. Put this down. Take a straight edge. So my mark is right here, I can see it. Put it straight. Mark it. On both sides. This is my glue area. So now I'm gonna take some glue. And I thought I did such a good job of preparing but I didn't because oh, I really want to use a different brush. There's one. I'll see. I'm looking around in my shop now and I'm going to come behind the camera. I'm sorry guys for this really not well thought out portion of the job but sometimes we buy brushes in bulk off of eBay and we put the box somewhere we don't remember. Like this, this happens to us. <sighs> Andreas is off screen putting my garbage somewhere where we don't, we're not gonna bump into it. So typically I use a different rubber cement. I really like um, Top Bond. I'm out. If anybody didn't know I'm in Canada, Canada is fantastic except for when it comes to getting products from the United States. So for me to get some of the glue I really like, it's gonna be super expensive and time consuming. So I'm using this waterborne rubber cement, which works good. The real important thing is to use a nice foam brush to spread it out. It's not rubber cement, it's contact cement. I'm so old that I refer to it by that old name. So you can see, now I'm coming to that area that has the tape on it, and I'm not getting any glue there where that tape is. And that's going to be important when we go to seam this. If you remember, I marked. This is just a second ago in real time. I marked 
that same area off on this wrap, right? So I'm not putting any glue there. I don't know if we can see this. I can't see the other camera's view. But we're putting glue everywhere on here, except for that one area. Usually it takes a long time for this glue to set up. But we'll wait and see. It's gonna spread this out so it's not too thick and runny. Maybe I over apply it a little. I wanna make sure I can get it everywhere inside this back seam. clean it up with the foam. It's like a sponge. I'll clean up any extra if I haven't used it. Good. This brush now is going to go in the garbage. And we're just going to wait for it to dry. Contact cement has to become dry. We apply it on both sides of the product because it sticks to itself. So because I don't have any more cool stories to relate right now, I'm just gonna turn the camera off and we'll come back when this tacks up, probably be a few minutes. This is the part of the key repair process that takes time, it's a waiting game. We're back. So the glue's dried. I have uh, just noticed that, you know, black is a great color for slimming. It's not a great color for being clean when you're doing a messy job. So here we are. The glue is dry, so contact cement is good to go when you can touch it and it doesn't stick to you. So we're good. So I'm gonna apply this wrap onto the cue first section. I made lines, right? There's lines here, there's lines here. There's also lines on the wrap. So I'm gonna line those up and glue it down. pressure down the line once I lined it up stuck cool awesome the next thing is so I don't know how most guys do it but the way I do it I'm gonna peel this off this is the portion that doesn't have glue on it oh wow this is cool you'll actually be able to see that when I rotate this cue up to the secondary camera I don't know if we can see the delineation mark of the glue Right here, it's cool, neat. Now that I've centered it and glued that down, I can remove this tape that I had on there. This was only so I didn't get glue on the cue. You can not put this tape on, but I like it because it lets us not get glue on the cue and we can mark our center line. You don't have to, you can, you can clean contact cement off pretty easy. Now what I'm gonna do is just, hmm, good times. I wanna peel this glue off too, this tape off. Good. So now I wanna push this down. tight against the wrap channel. I'm doing this with my big, my big lathe. One of the reasons was I thought it'd be it's easy because we got a nice, nice big working area. Lots of room underneath. I can sort of do what I want. I have a few different machines in my tiny little shop. My shop is small, I'll tell you what. I, I, I might have 100 square feet here. So if anybody's looking to get into Q repair, Q building, you don't need a lot of room. 
unless you have people over, which seems to be the case. A lot of people definitely like to see when their cues in a machine. It's understandable. That's why I got into key repair. I didn't trust anybody to touch my stuff. So I did it myself. Maybe you want to be the same way. You can trust me. Send me your stuff. I do work for people all over Canada and the USA. The mail system has made it really nice for people to get stuff done wherever they want. Okay, so this is installed. This, this part's done. All we have left to do is the seaming, which is the really tough part. And that's why I left this one inch area unglued. So this is not touching each other, right? I can now cut this seam. And that is what I'm gonna use this tool. This is the, you know, I forget what they call it. So it's a leather wrap cutting tool from Unique Products. Jim Sickles over at Unique Products is a fantastic person to deal with. Makes and sells these parts, as long as a lot of other tools for key repair. Definitely hit him up. Tell him Darcy sent you. He'll thank you or me, or maybe not answer your calls. I don't know. This is a, a, big, a big tool you need to have if you are going to be doing leather wraps. One of the reasons I, I decided to use this big machine is because I can put this on and cut my seam in place. So what I wanna do is sort of find out where center is on my unglued portion, it's right there. And make sure my tool is sort of perpendicular to that area. Tighten this down. That's tight. Install this cutting guide on there. This gets clamped down pretty tightly. The seam is the most important part of doing a leather wrap install. You always want to, if you're starting to do leather wraps, have multiples of your chosen wrap in stock. Never buy just one blank. You wanna have four or five, six of them. Because if you screw, this is the part where if we screw it up, we're starting over. Nobody wants to do that, but it happens. Leather's tough. If it was easy, everybody'd be doing it. Not everybody's doing it. Remember I used this razor blade to cut the top and bottom? I could probably cut these seams with that same razor blade, but because I have more, I'm just gonna get another one, it's brand new. We want this cut to be sharp, straight, no issues. So new blade, I'm gonna use this side to cut this side of the wrap channel. I'm gonna use the back side to cut the other side. So one cut per side. I'm gonna flip that around. Use the same blade. part is to have this blade as tight to the cutting guide as possible. This piece is going to be so thin. It's going to be tough to remove. I hope we're going to be able to see this. This is how far I was off. Just a tiny, tiny sliver. I was, this is my breath you can hear, no COVID. 
I know it's a tough, the whole world is in a state of COVID paranoia. I've been tested. Yeah, had it. No, t no COVID, I had the test. That's what that gag response was about. I do have one of those. That was tight. I don't know what gorilla tightened that on. It makes good stuff. It's being so hard. There we go. Cut one side of the wrap. We're gonna cut the other side now. It's probably better if I did this on a tabletop instead of hanging off the lathe because I can feel a little bit of motion from side to side of this cutting jig. We're going to find out together what's going to cause an issue. And I promise you if I have to redo this wrap, it will not be filmed. <laughs> Just say, hey, I had to redo the wrap. Made a boo-boo. but it's all in the finished product. If it looks good, I'm happy. Okay. So I'm gonna, yeah, it looks good. So we look, this, this side has been cut and if we fold it over, it looks like it lines up with the top of that thing, so we're good. So my blade, I'm gonna flip it around. Use a fresh side. Now I'm gonna block one of our cameras with my big head. Turn it around, cut from the other side. This should pop out. Looks good, and if I fold that over, looks like it meets up wonderfully. Wow, I might've got lucky. This is my first leather wrap today. So we'll see, see how it turns out. Jim makes really good products, super tight. Quick look to see, yeah, which often happens, unfortunately, with these. This is a boar skin, like I said earlier. It's pretty pliable, so I over tightened it. I'm gonna have to recut this one seam. There's an overlap here. It's not good. This part's good. This part's good. This part's good. That part's good. This part's not good. So I'm gonna cut here. I'm gonna pull the cue out of here, reset it, which is gonna take more time than I wanna show you. And maybe some secrets shouldn't be shared. So I'm gonna recut this seam and we'll come back. The next step that I won't film is gonna be application of glue inside of both halves of this leather that we marked off, didn't glue earlier. This doesn't have glue on it. I'm gonna apply glue, let it dry, and we'll come back and show you the seaming process. Okay, we're back. I recut the seam a couple of times. Soft leather is kind of a pain because it stretches when I do this kind of thing. Hopefully it's gonna work out. It's been glued, both sides, this area in the middle where I had tape on before, I glued that. I also glued the inside of the leather. So here comes the magic. This is really awful. It's boring, but it's also how those kids say, satisfying. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna watch this. So we are going to match this up. So all we're doing, fold and press. Oh, and I made a mistake, but that's okay. So 
I have been, I'm a pool player. If you don't know this, I play. I shoot, I shoot like this, play that game. When I play, sometimes I like to imbibe with aiming juice. I've had some aiming juice also now. Helps me focus. So that's where we're at. I made a mistake here, whatever. We'll fix it, no big deal. MBD. So I started at the top, now I'm gonna go to the bottom. We're gonna meet in the middle. Like any good negotiation, right? Perfect. Love it so much. So I'm, I'm coming up from the bottom like a pincer almost. Any questions about this stuff? Hit me up. Love to talk online. Message me through YouTube, Facebook, Insta. I'm available to chat, talk shop, ask me questions. Love to help out, give advice where I can. I'm approachable. Might even start TikTok. Somebody like teach me about TikTok. I need help. I'm old, look at me, silver beard. That guy needs help with TikTok. Okay, look at that. So I'm gonna turn this to face my GoPro. I don't know, if, I don't, I don't know what angle is right. But if you can see that, that's the seam. It's golden, right? Not bad for a first timer. So now I'm gonna take this floor roller. It's like a little laminate or linoleum roller. It's soft, it's not gonna damage the leather, not gonna damage the cue. And I'm just gonna roll this right over top of that seam and flatten it out. And I can feel as I push this, there's very little gap on any of this. I'm just gonna flatten this out. Like the bottom is perfectly flush, perfect. I don't know how a guy gets so lucky. Very slight gap at the top. But most people, when they hold their cues, they hold them down here or down here. So this is perfect. I, I couldn't have done better if I tried. I sort of tried. I laid what, four or five coats of Bondo. So obviously I didn't just let it go on the first attempt. So I'm putting some pretty good pressure with this roller, I'm trying to make it flat. Because the guy whose cue this is, he's gonna feel this. He's gonna, he's gonna be happy. I'm happy, it's not mine. So what's gonna happen now, really for the uh, purpose of the video, I'm kind of done. I'm not gonna show the last step, but I'll tell you about it. What I'm going to do is the seam here, when all is said and done, and that's pretty good. Like that's, that's not very visible at all. When the glue finishes tacking up, I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm just gonna rub it, and take any little loose bits of glue and roll them off. When that's done, and you can sort of see this, I don't know if maybe it doesn't show up, but there's little pebbles of glue that are coming up on my hand. When the little bits stop coming, I'm gonna run a little bit of black shoe polish on here just to hide the edges and uh, rub it some more and just finish it off. 
hopefully that seam will be invisible and you won't see it. And the guy's gonna say, hey man, how'd you get that on there in one piece? Well, that's impossible. We don't have that magic, it's not shrink wrap. Hey, that's a good idea. Shrink wrap. Coming soon to a queue near you. Jokes. Well, that's it, that's, ba that's basically it. The biggest part of it was prepping the queue for uh, the leather wrap using the Bondo, which is kind of a pain. Like I said, never doing it again. This is the last one that will ever come out of my shop. I'm glad I could film it for posterity. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope this intrigued you as much as it did me, which is zero amount. Gotcha. Check in later. Shoot me a comment, like, subscribe, share, all those things. Follow me on all my other platforms. And I really appreciate you checking this video out.